Hello and welcome back to another video. Today we're talking about are buy to lets dead? Is buy to let property well and truly gone? Now make sure you stay tuned to the very end of this video because I'm going to be discussing several key factors that will answer the question whether or not buy to let is well and truly dead. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Marco. I'm a portfolio landlord, property investor, developer and mentor. And I'm very passionate about helping people and individuals invest in property. Now I should have been flying to Day, me and another pilot had uh, planned to go to France. However, the aircraft is still in maintenance. So I thought, well, I've got some really good videos that I'd like to film today. And one of them here is, is buy to let dead? It's a very common question that's been asked really since September 2022, since interest rates started really to hike up. And what this means is because interest rates have gone up, the monthly mortgages have also gone up and it squeezes profitability. Now, I want to give you an example. If you're buying at market, Market value. You're then giving the property to an agent to manage, so you have to pay for those management fees. And maybe your mortgage, your monthly mortgage cost is roughly, say, 70% of your rent. So yes, buy-to-let property is probably dead for those investors that are passive, are buying at market value, and they have no choice but to give it to an agent. And the reason why that doesn't work is because once you've paid off your mortgage and all your maintenance and your agent fees, you probably have no money left for you. That's really, really important to think about. So this video is all about how to profit from buy select property in a tougher environment, in an environment where interest rates are slightly higher. And the rest of this video is going to give you several tips and tricks on how to make buy to let profitable strategy for you in 2023 and going forward. And this is also really applicable at any other time in the future when interest rates are higher than what they have been in the past. So let's just discuss something very simple before we move on. There are generally two ways you make money in buy to let property. You have your rental income over over here and also you have the capital appreciation. This is really important to think about. Now the reason why people and the, and the media is reporting that buy to let property is dead is because all of a sudden landlord's income over here, the rental income minus the mortgage minus the other costs has really fallen. It's decreased substantially and the reason why is because mortgage rates have increased. However, let's not lose sight of the long-term goal of investing in property. The majority of people invest in property for the long term and long term what we're really thinking about is the capital appreciation. What is the value of this property going to be like in the 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years? So into the future. So yes, maybe our short term income is squeezed, but what does our long term income look like? And if you ask anyone that invested in property prior to the 7, 8 financial crisis, they will tell you the main reason they invested in property is for capital appreciation, to invest in an asset that appreciates in value over the long term, not the short term. Whereas if you look at the past 15 years, the main reason why people have been investing in property over here is for an income. They want a more passive way of, of making a living and earning a living, and therefore they're investing in property. Now, yes, this has squeezed, but in the second part of this video, I'm actually going to tell you how to make this side of the business, how to make the rental income actually work for you. So that's a brief history and kind of where we are now in terms of thinking, but let's not lose sight. You know, these investors that were investing in property 20 plus years ago, they are investing for a reason. And that's because the long-term value of the property portfolio will increase. And this is what capital appreciation is and why it is so powerful. Don't just be investing for income because really you're leaving a lot of money on the table if you're completely ignoring the capital growth element of property investing. So we're going to talk about capital growth first of all, and then we're going to talk about income. So first of all, capital growth, really important thing. We've already identified so far in this video that a lot of investors don't even think about capital growth. They want income. So let's switch our thinking. We want to be maybe investing in areas with strong fundamentals. And what, what I mean here is areas that have low crime, good schools, great employers, good transport links. But most important out of all these factors, is the last factor at high percentage of owner occupiers in that area. Because what does this do? This basically means that lots of people want to buy and live in this area over here. And what that does is over the long term, that pushes up prices. So we want to be buying in areas of strong fundamentals. That's really, really important. So as I'm recording the video in 2023, who knows what the next couple of years are going to look like? It could be a small growth, it could flatline, or it could actually fall. No one knows, right? But 
this isn't important for capital growth because we're looking at 20 years. We're not looking at two years. And we'd like to think over 20 years, it's going to be, again, another positive 20 years. And there's lots of data to show that. Going back, I think it was since World War I or World War II, I can't quite recall, and property prices have substantially grown every single decade on average, roughly in the past 100 years. So really, there's no reason to think that property prices would dramatically fall over the next 10 or 20 years to come. Now, yes, this certainly isn't the glory days where in, you know, in 2016, 2017, we could quite easily attribute a 5% capital growth on our property every single year and more or less be right. I don't think we're going to see that level of growth, certainly in the next five years. Again, I could be wrong, but I'm not forecasting for 5% year on year. I think that's very optimistic. You'd much rather be conservative with your capital growth figures when you're factoring in a potential growth percentage when you're analyzing your deal. So we've already spoken about the idea of buying an asset with the hope that in the long term it will increase in value. That's what capital growth is. But another related really important topic, which I've already kind of hinted at when I introduced this video, is that we need to be buying below market value. Now, below market value is exactly as it sounds. We're buying the property below what it's worth. And here's the reason why we do that. So let's use an example. Let's say we've got a property over here, we're buying it at market value, and we've got a property over here, we're buying below market value. Let's make some really easy figures. Let's say the property is worth £100,000. So over here, we're buying at market value for £100,000. But over here, we're buying below market value. Let's say we're buying it for £80,000. So we've got a £20,000 discount. So what does this mean? The person over here has no equity in the property as soon as they complete. It, you know, they've bought it at the market value. So they have to wait for that value to increase to generate equity, or they have to refurb the property and, and hopefully after the refurb, they're in positive equity. So they've got to do something or rely on property prices to increase. However, the investor over here is slightly more savvy. They bought it at a discount. So as soon as they've completed on the property, they've got 20,000 pounds equity in that property. So they're not relying on the capital values to increase, to profit from buy to let property, to profit from investing in property. Furthermore, they don't have to do a refurb whatsoever to even realize this equity. They've just bought it below market value. Nice, easy, and simple. So here's a tip I have for anyone watching this video, no matter what property strategy you're undergoing, but it's especially relevant to buy to let property, which is always buy below market value because you've got equity from day one as soon as you complete on that property. You're not relying on property prices to increase the value. You're not relying on a refurb to increase the value. You. Simply, you've locked in a really good deal. You've got lots of equity, and it's an incredible way to profit from buy to let property. Right, so I think we've exhausted capital appreciation there, and hopefully, you understand how important and how crucial it is. But if you don't, here's a real key, interesting takeaway. Most investors make more money on the capital growth side compared to the income. So, most investors normally make about 60% of their profits through buy to let property through capital appreciation, and only 40% come from the rental income income minus the mortgage minus all the other costs. So that's a really important thing to think about. And when you're buying and analyzing and looking for your next deal, it's really important that you think and seriously consider more so than the rental income, the potential for capital growth. So let's come on to rents and rents are incredibly important. And this is the main reason why the media is reporting that buy to let property is dead. Because once landlords have received their rents, paid their mortgage costs, paid all their other fees, they are left with an amount down here, which is far less than it used to be a couple of years ago. So that's why buy to let is seen as dead. However, I want to discuss areas how we can actually claw this back. How can we increase profitability? How can we ensure we're still making money on our property and making good money on our property? So I'm going to reel off several tips and tricks on what we can do here to mitigate this tougher economic climate and how we can mitigate increased interest rates and therefore higher mortgage costs. So right, number one tip, really, really important. And I mentioned this on a previous previous video, consider increasing your rents. Now, if you haven't increased your rents in years, which believe it or not is very common, I come across investors and landlords all the time that haven't increased their rents in four or five years. Well, you need to be increasing your rents. Increase your rents fair. And the way I like to say it is increase your rents often 
but little. So you want to be making nice, small, fair, regular rent increases. Again, another theme that I've mentioned on the channel in many previous videos, if you have an excellent tenant in there who's been paying your rent on time and looks after the property, well, I wouldn't increase that rent to market value. I want to be showing the tenant a bit of goodwill and I really appreciate their custom. So it's really important to increase your rent, especially now that mortgage costs are higher because mortgage costs are going up, but so are rents. Rental inflation at the moment is absolutely crazy. It's also double digits. So this is another reason why you need to keep pace with inflation, with rental inflation and increase your rents fairly. Now, another key reason why you need to increase your rents right now, especially if you have a remortgage coming up shortly is because as we know, lenders will stress test the mortgage based on the rental income. And if you've got a tenant in there for the past four or five years and you haven't increased the rent, well, do you think you're going to pass the stress test? Maybe not. So you don't want to not qualify for that new mortgage just because your rental income is so low. So, you know, make this investment work for you. Don't be afraid to increase the rents in a fair manner because the worst thing that can happen is you're scared to increase the rents and then therefore the mortgage company are not willing to give you another mortgage on the property because your rents are too low and you don't pass the stress test. So another killer reason why you need to consider increasing your rents fairly. So let's move on from rents and come on to the mortgage costs, which obviously is the biggest cost to run the business. Now, first of all, if you're on a variable rate and you're, you know, your fixed term has expired and you've moved on to the standard variable rate from that lender, well, definitely speak to a mortgage broker. You're probably leaving money on the table. So again, if you want to be put in touch with my mortgage broker, who I know, like, use and trust, go to my website, www.ms7.uk, click on use our suppliers, tick the box for mortgage broker and I'll introduce you to him. So obviously it goes without saying that you need to be on the best mortgage rate that you can obtain to minimize your mortgage cost as far as possible, that's obvious. So let's move on and the last cost I want to talk about is that if you have a property and you're giving it to an agent to manage, well obviously you're going to be paying that agent fee, which is something we can try and avoid, especially if this agent fee means that you're no longer making any money on the property or you're making a reduced amount that you're not too happy with. So consider managing the property yourself. Managing property isn't as hard or even as stressful as many investors seem to think. Now, yes, you could instruct the agent in the first instance to find a tenant, but from that point, you could then manage that tenancy yourself. You know, there are many courses that you can go on, so it doesn't cost much money, and they will teach you how to manage a property from a legal point of view, which is the most important part. But the maintenance is what a lot of investors fear. Now, here's the thing. It's very, very easy to, to fix this issue. All you need to do is have a phone and when the tenant contacts you, maybe there's a leak or maybe there's something wrong with the electrics, all you have to do is put them in touch with an electrician or a plumber. And what I do is I put them in direct touch and I'll just say liaise convenient time to go around to the property and fix the issue and you can send me the invoice once it's done. Or if you're not too sure how much it's going to cost, get the plumber or the electrician to give you a call whilst they're at the property and they can give you a quote. So it's very, very simple to do. Don't be fooled in thinking that you have to be living in the same city as your property, you can quite easily manage properties abroad or even on the other end of the UK. Yes, you may want to use an agent in the first instance to find the tenant, but from there, there's no reason why you can't do it. Again, if you have a little bit of time and if you're going to invest that time in knowing how to manage a property properly, especially from a legal point of view. Now, if you incorporate all these tips that I've just given you on the rental side, so increase your rent, find a better mortgage deal, consider managing the property yourself, you're going to be saving saving hundreds of pounds per month. So all of a sudden you could go from a, a scenario where maybe you're breaking even because you've just taken on a really expensive new mortgage and maybe you're gonna be making 200 pounds per month profit. So implement and use these tips and tricks that I've referenced on the video to really make buy to let property a profitable strategy. Yes, we can still be making good money on the rental side and increase your horizon. So don't look at the next two years when it comes to capital growth, look at the next 20. And I'm sure there'll be a very very positive 20 years. So I really do hope you've got value from this video and now understand how important and how crucial the capital growth element is when it comes to profiting from buy to let property. Now, if you're still stuck and you're still not too sure where to go and you're looking to invest in property and specifically buy to let property, consider taking on a coach or a mentor. Now, if you're interested in working with me and want to see if we are the right fit, head to my website, www.ms7.uk, click on the coaching and mentoring page, scroll to the bottom and please do book a call with me. Now, have I missed something? Have you got another idea how we can 
can increase the profitability on our buy to lets. Or maybe you've got another concept or strategy you'd like to share with us. Please do comment below in the box. I personally respond to all comments that we receive on the channel. Thank you very much for watching. All the very best with your property investing day. Goodbye.